We're in the bedroom. Let's talk about... I don't think I can sing that song. <laughs> no, we are actually in our guest bedroom, our favorite guest bedroom. We call it the guest master bedroom because yes. it has an ensuite bathroom, which we love. But today we're taking the deep dive. We're going down the path, the intimacy path. Mm -hmm. And let me just start by saying I am so sore right now. <laughs> From working out. From working out. Yeah, yeah my biceps are... <laughs> I really sore. Ugh, oh my, my shoulders. Gosh. He's been talking about this all day and I'm like, Cole, come on. I worked out too. I'm sore uh, too, but you don't hear me uh, complaining. Uh, you're not sore as I am. Yes, I am. My legs are sore. <laughs> Let me rub you. No, it's okay. I'll fix it. <laughs> so yeah, we have been thinking a long time about talking about intimacy and doing a video and we just haven't done it. Um, but I feel like three years married, six years together, I think it's a good time to, to dive into the topic, especially mm. because it seems to be something that people really need to talk about, especially yeah. newly injured individuals, professionals, people in that world. Right. It's, it's a very, you know, taboo thing to talk about, you know, it's very hush hush, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, it's a huge part of all of our lives, which yeah. is fine. That's just it's human nature. And so it, it's so hard for people who go through a, a difficult situation, a traumatic situation in their lives, mm -hmm. everything gets upended. And one of the most important things with human nature is something that they can't really get a bunch of information on or yeah. it's like awkward to get information on. So I think we'd like to do our part to uh, open the conversation up a little bit. And yeah. you know, we're not going to go into any dirty details. Personal details. Yeah. Um, not too personal. But we, we will share from our experience and, you know, share what advice we have from our relationship too. Mm -hmm. So, so we, <clears throat> what was that sound? I don't know. <laughs> I'm choking. <laughs> Speaking of intimacy. Oh my. So we did a poll on Instagram, Cole's Instagram, and we asked people to submit appropriate questions. And I am blown away by one, the respect. Yeah. Like it, they were such respectful questions. Maybe one or two were a little extra. There's always some trolls that are going to pop up. But. Yes, but there were some really great questions and mm -hmm. we got over 300 responses, y'all. Yes, over 300, and we had taken the time to go in, try to consolidate the ones that kind of overlapped, yeah. put them into categories, and uh, we realized that one video is not going to be enough for no. this topic. And so we are going to follow a format of Shane and Hannah, aka yes. Squirmy and Grubs. AKA the besties. <laughs> Our besties, yeah. They, <laughs> They did a similar video series on intimacy. A couple years ago. So we're going to kind of follow the format they used. And after our series or during our series, you should go check out theirs and see, you know, how a lot of these topics kind of compare and contrast. Because yes. with Shane's disability, he has spinal muscular atrophy. Obviously, that's a lot different than spinal cord injury. So we have different experiences when it comes to intimacy. Yeah. Um, so their series, definitely watch it and then watch ours. This is going to be a three-parter. Yeah, so this I is... I held up my hand as if I can do three. <laughs> Three-parter, guys. Three-parter. Three-parter, all right. So this is just part one, uh, and then we'll do it consecutively. So next Sunday will be part two and so on. And then at the beginning of every video, we're going to say what we're covering in this video so that you know if this is a video that is going to answer a question that you really, really have. And then also, just a warning, uh, Shane Hannah did this, and I think this is a great idea. Family, friends, you know, you don't have to watch this video. Yeah. It's not necessary. <laughs> Goodbye. It's good to see you. So long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Obviously, we're not going to go into super deep personal details, but, you know, it's still not necessary to watch this video. We appreciate your su <laughs> support on all other videos, though. Now they're definitely going to watch it. I know. It. Now they're definitely going to watch <laughs> it. Mom. <laughs> she is. Pops won't. No, pops, my... pops the Prude is out of here. No, your dad, too. <laughs> Pop my, yeah, both our Pops. And my brother. I mean, all the guys are like... Yeah, what's up with guys being such prudes? Yeah, weird. the heck? <laughs> anyway, so in this first video, we are going to cover such topics as... <laughs> Kel, so, can you hear me say that? Why? Such topics as... Welcome to school, guys. Oh, yeah. before we dive into anything, we want to remind everyone, we're not professionals. We're just oh, sharing our good. personal experience. Yes, disclaimer. So, we are not professionals. Obviously, if you want to seek out a therapist or a professional, please seek them out and don't rely on us to provide that kind of information. We're just going to share mm -hmm. what we have learned, our experiences and resources that we are aware of. And as always, spinal cord injury is so varied, yes. a huge spectrum. So again, we're going to talk from our experiences, but everyone's disability is different. So you might have to do things differently. So in this video, we're going to talk about self-confidence post SEI. Navigating and initiating intimacy in early relationships. <laughs> That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. Yeah, <laughs> man. 
Everything I say could be a dirty joke. Oh my. Also, intimacy learning curve. So the learning curve we uh, experienced. Post SEI intimate. Oh gosh. <laughs> Post SEI intimacy disappointment. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a tough one. Um, SEI prep before intimacy. Mm-hmm. And then getting creative in the bedroom, Ooh. as per title. Wow. Um, <laughs> Wowzers. Wowzers. Let's dive in. Let's dive in. Number one, what will number come in? Oh. Gosh. Okay, question number one. Tips on being newly injured and being confidently desirable slash attractive in new body, and what kind of anxiety did you experience or deal with? Yeah, so that's um, a good question. This is, this is a you question. Yeah, yeah, this is a this is a me question, which is interesting because I've been on quite a self confidence journey. Mm -hmm. I would say I did not really feel that confident right after my injury, and a lot of that had to do, I think, with my identity. So I identified as you know the jock athlete with lots of friends, and like I was a good time. Like I, I was in all the social circles. Like I was popular. I was I was that guy. Yeah. You know, I was he. Yeah. I was him. <laughs> <laughs> he was me. <laughs> no, so all of my lacrosse guys, all my basketball guys, those were all my buddies. We did everything together and then I become paralyzed and so I, I lost that. And so a lot of my identity was lost as well. And with losing your identity, I feel like it's hard to have any level of confidence, mm -hmm. whether whether it's dating or whether it's just like, you know, confident that you can do well in, in class, you know. It's, it's hard when you don't even know who you are to believe in yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And just a reminder, Cole was 16. Uh, for those of you who are watching and don't quite know, Cole was injured mm -hmm. at 16 years old. And I think one of the biggest things for me to process was my new body, for sure. Being an athlete, like I was very proud of my physical prowess. Becoming paralyzed, that's lost, obviously. And so I didn't really feel confident in my body and my identity and all of that just meant that I wasn't really putting myself out there and I, I didn't think I was very desirable. I did have a girlfriend like pretty right away you after my injury. You've been dating her before. But we had a long relationship before, not like, uh, I don't know how to describe it. I don't a 16 know. year old relationship. <laughs> right, one of those things. When we started dating for the first time after my injury and that just didn't go well because we had a very particular relationship before my injury and then all of a sudden I'm paralyzed and things were a lot different mm -hmm. and that it just didn't work. And that kind of hurt my confidence more. So I, I just kind of was on a downhill uh, spiral with my confidence for a long time. What helped me, I think, was becoming more mature, growing up a bit, understanding that this is my situation. If I'm gonna be confident, this is the body I have to do it in. Whether it looks like this or it looks like The Rock or Thor <laughs> or something, you know, I have- Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah. I have this body to be confident in. Mm -hmm. And the confidence then, to me, became a choice, you know? and. <laughs> I'm saying this as if it's so easy, I'm just gonna choose to be confident. But this took until like the end of college. I didn't go on a single date all of college until my, like the last part of my senior year. So how I, many years was that? Four years. Four years. Three and a half years, I didn't go on a single date in college. And finally, I was like kind of over that and I asked someone out and it went well and I was like, wait a minute, this is really cool. You know, yeah. I just had a date and this person was attractive and they seemed to enjoy their time with me and I'm about to graduate college, I'm about to start a real estate business. Wait a minute, I actually have some stuff going for me here and I could find someone. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the self-confidence started kind of rushing back into me because I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I am desirable mm -hmm. with this body. Whoa, what a revelation, you yeah. know? And I will say coming from my perspective, when I first met you and we first started dating, I feel like I felt Cole's confidence. Cole being confident in who he is and himself and knowing who he was, was very attractive to me. Mm -hmm. And so even if he wasn't truly confident, he sure as hell faked it. <laughs> yeah. And so I think him being confident made me even more attracted to him. Even if you don't truly feel it, yeah. say in your head, I'm confident, I'm confident, and start acting confident, and it, you'll come off confident to, to other people as well. And I think that makes a big difference. Absolutely, and that's such a good point. You don't have to, you, you can absolutely fake it. I faked it for a long time. It does make a difference though when, when you truly feel it too. Yeah. But yeah, confidence is such a big thing, and that was one of the things that attracted me to Charisma. She's not disabled, but I freaking loved her confidence, mm -hmm. you know? Which is funny because I struggle with like insecurities as well and we've talked about this at a couple of times and when we first started dating Cole had 
you know, was dealing with his confidence with his body and his spinal cord injury. And I was dealing with my insecurities being black and this white guy is interested in me and I was very like insecure about that. And we talked mm -hmm. about that maybe our third, fourth date. And so we're both coming into this with insecurities. And so like, that's something to remember too. Like everyone has their insecurities and something that they're dealing with. Obviously it's different for everyone, but maybe that helps to remember that. Yeah, and everyone feels differently about everything. And something that held me back was my assumption that other people would find me unattractive. Mm -hmm. And I didn't give people the benefit of the doubt to find me attractive first and that assumption held me back and so once I like kind of said screw it let's just find out mm -hmm. you know I'm gonna go fake it be this guy and then I met someone who thought I was attractive from the jump and then gave me every reason to be confident from there on so just don't assume that people are gonna find you unattractive or find you not valuable as a partner that yeah. that's a dangerous assumption and it's gonna hold you back and I will say I I agree with that I also will say I find Cole way more attractive and desirable now than before and that's the thing i found you extremely attractive initially Thanks, but babe. the more i got to know you and the more we spent time together my attraction just kept growing and growing and growing and uh, it, uh, i mean what really happens you started styling me no i didn't start styling you for years years after we did when we bought a house and i was like okay <laughs> um, I can get rid of this, get rid of that. No, I just feel like when you get to know someone for who they truly are, that's a whole nother level of attraction. And so I know yeah. that the initial tr attraction means a lot to a lot of people, but- Love grows. Love grows, attraction grows. Um, and then so hopefully more people realize that when seeing other people and realizing that people have more to offer than the outside appearance. Absolutely, Yeah. for sure, so much more. So what were your tips? <laughs> I don't really know. <laughs> fake it, fake it till you believe it. But then you will believe it. <laughs> right, right. The saying used to be fake it till you make it. Yeah. But this is like fake it until you just believe it. Yeah. I faked it until I was like, oh wait, I am confident now. Yeah. Um, but, wait, what, but what are some ways you can actually truly find confidence? Oh, find confidence? Yeah. I think you should uh, self-evaluate. I think everyone has skills. I think everyone has talents. I think everyone can look at their life and find something to be proud of. And once you identify those things, lean into it and really embrace, okay, I, I did that. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of that. And that means I can do something else. I can do this, I can do that. So my tips are find those things to be proud of and be proud of them. Fake it if you need to fake it, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And don't assume that people won't find you uh, desirable. Yeah, and to just cap it all off, if you need to go to therapy to True. really find that source of confidence and just help figuring that out in your life, then go to therapy because yeah. Talk people, to some real professionals. Yeah, prof <laughs> professionals really can give you the true knowledge and tips that you need. We're for just sure. speaking from our experience. <laughs> just way to reframe things, you know? The way you think about things is super important. It really is, it really is. Okay, great answer, babe. All right, cool, Yay. thanks. Question one down. Um, okay, question number two. How did you guys navigate intimacy when you first started dating? And does it look different now? And then also who initiated the intimacy conversation? Yeah. So I, I just kind of like tried to protect myself like this when she was jumping at me. Oh my god! She gosh. like jumped at me and I just, ah. Yeah, I just like <laughs> prowled. <laughs> no. Pounce, is that what Pounce. you mean? Pounce, yeah, prowled. Pounce. Pounced while prowling. <laughs> Both. <laughs> That's an interesting question. So we have to think back to when we first started dating. Wow, so long ago. Yeah. I will say this is one thing that Colst did when we started dating that bothered me initially, but I respect it. And now looking back on it, I appreciated it. But he, after our first date, I didn't expect us to kiss or anything. Fine, mm -hmm. fair. Second date, I was like, okay, maybe I'll get a kiss. Second Wait, date. Wait, what are you what are you qualifying as the first date? The dinner and a movie? Yes. Okay. Dinner and a movie. Second date, I was like, okay, maybe he'll kiss me. Uh, but he didn't. And when he dropped me off on the second date, he was still in his truck and he just dropped me off at my house. And it was like, okay, bye. And I was like, sad. I was like, okay. And then the third date, we finally kissed. And I asked Cole about that. And he told me that he didn't want to kiss me in a car in a position that made it very difficult for him to be able to initiate anything or to physically do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and so behind the wheel, it was very difficult. First date is a little soon. <laughs> um, yeah, if you've seen me in my truck, I'm, I'm, there's a lot going on. It's really tight. Yeah. Uh, and so he waited until there was a moment where he could initiate and he, we had the room to explore, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> and so I just asked her to come over and 
sit on my lap. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and the rest is history. I think that's making a move, you yeah. know? At some point you gotta make a move. And as a, a wheelchair guy, I was like, how am I gonna do this? Because obviously I can't go up to her. How is this gonna happen? Mm -hmm. And so I just had to do what I was able to do, which is ask her to come sit on my lap. Yeah, like come but, to you. But there's a way of saying things and there's a delivery that you can use that makes the tone clear. And so I just made sure it was clear the reason why I wanted her to come over and sit on my lap. And I yeah. think she knew and yeah, boom. We were very open with communicating at the beginning. And so if Cole wanted something, he would just say, hey, like come over here or hey, I don't know. Like if there are moments where it was harder for you to initiate it physically, you would just use your voice. Yeah, and I, I think we started to kind of get the vibe with each other. Yeah. Our favorite hangout sessions in the beginning was uh, getting on the couch. That was like our favorite hangout. That's what we do mm -hmm. all the time. <laughs> And so like once I'm transferred onto the couch and she's like snuggling up with me, now we're very proximal. Talking to her, I can say what I need. Mm -hmm. Like, can you move this way? Can you move that way? Having someone experienced, you know, working with people with disabilities was a benefit in that case. Like we had a bit less of a learning curve in that sense. Yeah. But I had a lot of confidence in her that she works with people with disabilities that I would, I would ask these things freely. Mm -hmm. I don't think that her working in that uh, environment should necessarily like be the only reason you can feel confident in like talking to your partner and like no. be open about things. I think that should be in any relationship, but in my case that did make it a little easier for me to be comfortable with that. Yeah. And then in terms of who brought it up, I think that we naturally just became intimate with each other, but I think there I definitely made the moves initially. Yeah, you made the initial moves, but I, but like just conversations about intimacy in general, I just I can't quite remember if we had conversations at the beginning or if it was more of me doing my own research outside of Cole mm. and I, I do recall doing a lot of research on my own and trying to get answers and finding it kind of difficult sometimes like if I had questions that I couldn't find the answers to I would just straight ask Cole and mm. we were very comfortable with each other to where I felt like I could ask those questions and it was okay but that can be tricky knowing if it if you're asking too much of a personal question too right so you even have to be communicative about what you're communicating yeah it's like can I ask you this question yeah it, it can be really tricky yeah does it look different now? Um, yes. Yes, yes. I think it does look different 100%, now. 100% because we're comfortable with each other. We're super comfortable. And once you're together six years, like you want to find different ways to do things and find different ways to spice things up. Yeah. And so the, the communication is always there. That's ever present. Yeah. Um, and we're just learning new things to do. Yeah, so I, I feel like any relationship, intimacy looks different at the beginning than it does six years later. So yeah. definitely it looks different. Mm -hmm. And then also, I just want to say, when we're talking about intimacy, it's all kinds of intimacy. We're not talking about the big, big, big moment. Mm -hmm. We're talking about cuddling. We're talking yeah. about hugging. We're talking about watching a movie together. There's so many forms of intimacy that's not just the physical intimacy. So this next question is, mm -hmm. was there an intimacy learning curve? I would say, oh yeah. 100%. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially for me. Well, I mean, obviously it's us. Especially for me too. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, it was both. I guess like for me, it was more of a discovery than mm -hmm. a learning curve. So I guess it's kind of the same thing. So like when we started dating, I had spent years with multiple full-time caregivers who could handle everything for me. And so I didn't have to do a lot of stuff like bed mobility. Like now I'm dressing myself so I can move myself around in bed a lot, mm -hmm. like really well. Also transferring, like I'm really good at transferring now. Like if I got on a couch, I could move around a couch relatively well, <laughs> depending on things. But anyway, I didn't know all of that when we were, we started dating. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really sure what I was capable of, how to use my body. And so the learning curve for me was figuring that out, mm -hmm. how to, how to use my body. What's a comfortable position for us to be snuggling on the couch? What's a comfortable position for us to do other things on the couch? It was a lot for me to learn just how to how to manipulate my body and, and try to be able to do things. Yeah. And I think for me, my learning curve was kind of the same. Like, what could I do? Again, when we're cuddling on the couch, what position can I cuddle Cole in mm. that doesn't hurt Cole? Is Cole uncomfortable? How is his body? Is he able to cuddle me back if I'm laying on him this way? Holding hands. How can I hold hands? Should I just grab Cole's hand to to hold hands? You know, should I 
you know, how do I get my hands intertwined to hold them? Is holding hands even necessary? Does it make sense for us? Well, no. <laughs> the answer to that one is largely no. Um, giving hugs was, you know, figure, the, I remember yeah. our first hug, I was like, oh my gosh. I didn't know how to approach it, how to come into it. And thankfully, mm -hmm. Cole is just a go-getter when it comes to hugs. <laughs> if you've ever met us and you've ever hugged Cole, you know he hugs everyone the same. He just hugs. He just pulls you right in. And if you're not ready, you will fall over. So just fair <laughs> Probably warning. Probably on the meat. Once yeah. Cole. Cole has literally <laughs> made a sweet woman fall over one time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, finding different ways to be intimate was huge in the beginning of our relationship because it wasn't all about just the one intimate thing that we all think about. There's yeah. definitely other ways. We just found what worked for us. And mm -hmm. what worked for us was getting on the couch, spending time together and watching a movie. That was our favorite form of intimacy at the beginning. And we did it all the time. All the time. All the time. <laughs> and you know, it's funny, like the learning curve, I think is something I feared a lot coming into a relationship is like, you know, I don't want to come in as the super inexperienced person who's embarrassing myself fumbling along. Mm -hmm. Charisma never made me feel that way, ever. And honestly, those are some of the most fun moments, I think, mm -hmm. like looking back on the early times of our relationship is when like we're kind of being goofballs. You know, we're trying to, you know, be intimate with each other, be really lovey-dovey with each other, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden I lose my balance, and I just, I just like, I'm falling on her, and yeah. I'm like, babe, you gotta help me up, and we're laughing, yeah. and then she, she gets me up, and we kiss, and mm -hmm. you know, that, those are some of the most fun moments where, you know, figuring out that learning curve, because mm -hmm. now we don't have those, and we're finding other things to spice things up, so it's like... Yeah, no, and I agree. I think the learning curve is kind of fun. Like, there, of course, there are awkward moments, and I think that's the case in any relationship. Mm -hmm. Let's say when you're kissing someone, you accidentally knock teeth. Yeah. Like, you have to learn how to kiss each other, and so this... You gotta learn how to laugh about that, too. Exactly, so the same learning curves that a non-disabled couple goes through, you know, a dis interable couple also goes through the same things and then you know and then some yeah. um but it's just a part of every relationship every relationship has a learning curve yeah it's i think that's going to be a running theme in this series is our relationship might look different but a lot of like the same evolution and like you know milestones in your relationship are very similar yeah. they just look a little different yeah in moments a lot different it just depends on the situation yeah um okay this is a very very good question question number four how to deal with the disappointment that intimacy feels so different after an sci hmm that that's a tough one yeah it is it is very disappointing we mentioned this earlier this is such a huge part of anybody's life it's human nature to want these things and so it's definitely disappointing it's still disappointing i'm still disappointed Mm -hmm. I think I'll always be disappointed because as a human, it's in my nature to always want that. I'm always going to want that. Mm -hmm. So like that, that's a bummer, but that's not to say that I have reason to be totally disappointed at all because mm -hmm. I have a very active, intimate life with my partner mm -hmm. and I'm very fulfilled and, and happy with it too. Yeah. But what did you do though at the beginning when you became intimate after your injury? Like how did you deal with that disappointment? How do you deal with that disappointment on a daily basis? I don't think I, I dealt with it well then. I think I was trying to, I think I was trying to act like it didn't, it didn't bother me. I think it was because I had so many other mental things I was processing at the time that like this one was just too much for me to handle with all of that. So I, in an unhealthy way, I think I just brushed it under the rug mm -hmm. to deal with later on. And I think that's part of the reason why I went through college, not really putting myself out there. Cause I think I was trying to convince myself that like I didn't care mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. you know, that like I didn't need that. Um, plot twist, I do need that. That's something that I think a lot of people need in their life. And so like going through college, I just felt like bitterness and like a resentment. And then once I made it through college, not having explored that at all, that part of my life, which is, you know, that's often a very transformative time in people's lives. But for me, it was nothing. And I was upset with myself about that. And so I guess, you know, talking about talking about it this way, I didn't mention it earlier, but maybe that was a big reason why in college, I just didn't do anything. It's because I was disappointed mm -hmm. and I am still disappointed about it like I said I have a, a great life now with charisma but it's disappointing I think I'm just better at handling emotions mm -hmm. and and handling the things that I don't like in life I've had a lot of opportunity and time to work on myself and my mental health and I've been to therapy so I've, I've learned tools to kind of cope with something I can't change because 
just like, you know, this is the body I have to be confident in, this is the body that I have to be intimate in too. So I'm just going to find the way to be fulfilled with my body. Yeah, I think that was very well answered. Um, and I think it's important to talk about the partner's perspective as well, the non-disabled yeah. partner, because I think the person that asked this actually was, is married or dating someone uh. with a spinal cord injury mm -hmm. and they were dating before the spinal cord injury. And so that is a perspective that we just don't have. I no, met Cole yeah, after true. his injury. And so I don't have the perspective of being intimate with Cole prior to an injury, having an injury and then figuring out intimacy after an injury. That is very tough and very challenging and I wish I could provide a perspective, but I do understand intimacy with a non-disabled partner versus a disabled partner. And it is very different. Um, I think that initially it wasn't, it didn't bother me as much actually. Initially, it was just fun like any other relationship, being intimate, finding different ways to be intimate, holding hands for the first time, hugging. That is so much fun in all relationships at the beginning. And so I feel like at the beginning, it didn't really cross my mind. But as we started dating more, as we dove deeper into our relationship, as we got married and started trying for kids, that is when I think I understood more the difference. Hmm. And so I think I did go through a period where I did found, find it challenging to continue to be more creative and stuff. But we talked to each other about how we're both feeling. And so I feel like, again, it goes all back to communication. It's just talking to each other about how you're feeling about whatever it is and then finding other ways to be intimate. So we just made it a point to find other ways to be intimate that made us very happy. And so yeah. right now we're dating again and that mm -hmm. is intimacy. We're finding fun ways to date every Wednesday. Check out those videos if you haven't seen them. Oh my gosh, this is the one we're about to post. <laughs> no, so this one good. we just posted. Oh, we just posted. It was so good. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. Um, No, but like finding ways to be intimate by dating each other and having more fun. And I think we get- Getting back to what it felt like yeah. in those early times during the learning curve. Yeah, and so I feel like we focus so much on the physical intimacy that we forget that there are other ways to be intimate and yeah. once we remember just be loving with each other yes once we remember those other avenues then i feel like that really helps with that potential disappointment um mm -hmm. but it's challenging yeah. we just gotta you we have to understand that it is different and that's okay it yeah. is different prior to injury and post injury it's going yeah. to be different and we just have to accept that it's different and find a way that makes sense and works yeah so disappointment is definitely a piece of it. I'm not sure what kind of tip to give people other than like take the time to just accept your position. Yeah. Understand that you still have something to work with. So don't don't act or don't think you don't. Yeah. Um, but yeah, disappointment is still something I feel. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a good one for you, Charisma. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I think it's a good one for both of us. <laughs> you Are you really? a yeah, really. Is there urinary or bowel prep needed prior to intimacy? So with this question, I'm assuming we're Talking obviously about going. You, yeah. Well, what? Oh what? my gosh, Me? cool. <laughs> No, I'm assuming we're talking about physical intimacy. Yeah. I mean, honestly though, yes, it, it does pertain to both of us. I will say that because I was going to start off saying that all couples, non-disabled huh. or dis interabled couples, should always use the restroom before coming extremely intimate with each other. That is a health education thing that we all should do that we've learned in school, hopefully. If not, uh, yeah. you should definitely do that because it helps avoid uh, UTIs. And yeah. for people with spinal cord injuries, UTIs can be a serious problem. And so it is important to, if you have the time, to void the bladder um, before getting really intimate with someone because yeah. UTIs, again, can be a problem, yeah. especially in the spinal cord injury world. But non-disabled couples should also do the same thing. And of course, generally speaking, hygiene is important. So you just want to make sure you're nice and clean and, and yeah. hygienic. Yeah. So, that's the word, Hyg hygiene -y? Hygienic. Hygienic. Hygienic, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so one thing that is very important to us is making sure I, I've relieved myself yeah. beforehand. And outside of that, I keep myself on a very consistent bowel routine. So I think my body is in a good place with understanding when that time is that time. Mm -hmm. So I haven't had any issues in that sense. We haven't had any issues at all, really. No, no. Um, we did make one discovery, but we'll probably touch on that. No, we can touch on that in this one. Oh, in here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can touch on that. So. Well, 
Oh. What? No, that is a, that is, sorry, you're talking about the AD? Yeah. That was a different question. With DTI. Yes. Okay. If possible, avoid your bladder. And if you think it's necessary to do a program, a valve program, then do it. Only you know what's best for you and your relationship with your partner mm -hmm. and what's best for yourself. If that's what you think you need to feel comfortable, then definitely do it. Our yeah. relationship and in, in, in our life, we have what makes sense for us. Mm -hmm. And a bowel program isn't something that we have found the need to do. Right. But some people do find that necessary. And so if you do, go ahead and do it. Especially if you have, I don't know how it works. Cole doesn't have a super pubic or ostomy bag. But in those situations, and I know a lot of people with SEIs do have those things, again, maybe doing some research asking asking your provider yeah. uh, for their advice uh, cuz we're just I'm just not sure about that. Yeah, disabilities are so different. Mm -hmm. But I I will I do want to say like there should be no shame in prepping for intimacy. Mm -hmm. I think that prepping for intimacy is totally okay. I think especially as you get older and uh, for couples out there like with kids and stuff, prepping for intimacy is very common. I think people have to schedule the time and, <laughs> when you have kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, you gotta like, you gotta plan it out and, and you know, maybe that's the case for us too. You know, if we knew I had bowel issues, we haven't been feeling very close and we want to connect somehow, mm -hmm. then we're going to plan an evening where I'm going to make sure I've taken care of everything I need to care, take care of. And my body's going to be ready to connect with my wife. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that's a very common thing in relationships. Yeah. And again, it just looks different. It just looks different. It's okay to be different. Yeah, I think that's like, I feel like we mm -hmm. hopefully answered that question. Well, there's another piece of this question that we'll answer in a later video. Yeah. My leg is Ooh, popping off. Popping. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we'll answer kind of how AD, autonomic dysreflexia, kind of fits into this equation. Yeah. But we'll, we'll tackle that in another one. I think that's next week's video we're talking about that, which is a really mm -hmm. good question. Again, we wish we could answer all the questions in one video, but there's just so many good questions yeah. from you guys. Um, okay, and final question. How challenging is it to be creative given Cole's disability? So when we read this question, we're assuming uh, they're talking about Cole's limitations as well, physical limitations, and mm -hmm. how we can just be creative overall. The way we want to answer that question is communication. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. seriously, that is the biggest answer to that question. Um, is communication. So the more communication you have, the less challenging it is. The less communication you have, the more challenging it is. Yeah. Um, I think it's, you, again, again, you have to go through a learning curve. It's going to present challenges at the beginning, figuring things out. Um, but you have to be able to communicate with your partner what you like, what you don't like, what you're willing to explore, what you're not willing to explore. What are some ways you can be intimate physically? What are some ways that you can be intimate that doesn't involve mm -hmm. physicality? Um, and so... Yeah. Communication. <laughs> yeah, communication is really big. The other thing is being adaptable. In all aspects of our relationship and my life, we have to find different ways to adapt. Like in our house, you'll see like we have on our back door this little cord that I use to help pull the door shut. In the office, if you see my pen, I have this foam cutout thing that you put around the pen so it's easier for my hand to hold it while I write. Mm -hmm. All of these are adaptive tools. Well, there are also other adaptive tools that can help assist you in other ways. So if you need to buy wedges or if you need to mm -hmm. buy something that you're able to hold on to because it has like a cuff or a wrist or whatever the case may be, there are tools out there for you if you go find them. Yeah, I think next week or the week after, I don't remember which part, but there's a, a deeper question asking about resources and tools. And we have some things that we have in mind that we'll share in those videos. Mm -hmm. But overall, you know, be open yeah. to being open yeah. uh, and communicate with your partner. So whether it being like super challenging or not, I don't know that that's the question. I think of it more like how fun is it to be creative? Mm -hmm. I think I think we have a lot of fun coming up with different ideas and, and different ways to do things together. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a fun time. It is a fun time, but I do think that ways in which you can be creative can be a range. And mm -hmm. so it could be more difficult things that you could try and easier things that you could try in terms of creativity, if that makes sense. I think so. Does that make sense? Y yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> no, we'll dive deeper in, into the tools and, and things that you can use. And so we'll share some examples. We're not going to say whether or not we've used them, any of these things, because I think that's very personal. But I know that there are tools just doing my research. And some of these things that you can use are harder and are yeah. challenging to use. And some of these things are much easier to use. So that's what I was just saying. Yeah. 
Now, I, we have had conversations with other couples like us or similar to us, and hearing how they've been creative is awesome. Yeah. Some, I know some people that are doing some wild stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm just saying that to say there's lots that can be done. I also will say it is amazing being in an interabled relationship and being friends with other couples in interabled relationships. We have maybe 10 different interabled couple friends that we have talked about this with. And detail. And yes, and it, it helps your relationship grow and become creative because you're learning and hearing these examples from other couples. Mm -hmm. um, couples that are very similar to you, couples that are different to you. It's just nice to talk, to have people to talk with. Of course, it's very personal. Of course, you have to be open to that. Uh, luckily, Cole and I are open and then we know people, some friends of ours, um, who are open as well. And so we've learned a lot from other couples ourselves and we're like, oh wow, that's cool, let's try it. And then we've tried it. I know it's sometimes hard to find those couples, but that has helped us personally in our journey too, in the intimate world, so. Yeah, knowing people is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, having a sense of belonging, like not just in your own relationship, but amongst other couples, you know, it feels good. It feels good. So yeah. getting connected is a is a big help. Yeah. Absolutely. And and that goes with anything too. There are a lot of conversations that we have with other interable couples that we would never have with our non-disabled couple friends, mm -hmm. just because they wouldn't understand. And so maybe there's a question about a bow program. I yeah. would go to my other interable couple friends and be like, hey, like we're having this problem. Have you ever had this problem? What do you do? And so having that community is really great as well. Yeah, we talked to Shane and Hannah about maybe doing a podcast. Maybe we should do a podcast with them and talk about all these things. Well, we, we're not a podcast, but we talked about maybe doing potentially a video where we all talk about our similarities and differences when it comes to intimacy. Because although we're similar, we're also very different um, yeah. too. So that could be really interesting. Yeah. So that wraps it for our first of three installments. Mm -hmm. Please stick around because we've got some uh, great questions coming up in the other videos. Yeah. We couldn't pat pack them all into the same one, but um, stick around for those. That the <laughs> they'll be coming the next three Sundays yes the next three Sundays and thanks for watching again Wednesdays are date videos yeah please check those out they have been so much fun talking about building intimacy it's been a great way for us to connect on a deeper level together and a fun level we're, as dating, well. again. we're dating again wow that's so cute <laughs> so cute uh, so yeah check out those videos too it's fun we're mm -hmm. trying to get two videos a week to y'all uh, and help yeah. us reach a million Speaking of intimacy, one of the things we love doing is playing video games together. That's an intimate time for us. So, Honestly, it is. So go to <laughs> twitch.tv slash rollwithcole and follow me on Twitch. Yes. We're going to play some games every like Saturday, I think Charisma will join me. Yeah, we'll play games on the weekends. Cole will play games during the weekday, though. Yes. So I'll have a, a schedule put up there at some point once I figure that out. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just come hang out with us while we play games. It's a lot of fun. Yes. And yeah. help us reach a million. We're very close. Very close. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and stay, stay positive. positive. Bye. Ooh. Stay sexy. <laughs> wow.